former president Jerry John Rawlings to rest. But you know what they say, life goes on and so we must be strong and we must push forward. In summary, we move, right? Well, once again, you're welcome. My name is Enimwa Enim Ado, and tonight I am so delighted to have some amazing guests with me um, as we, we talk about chivalry. Um, I have Jemima Nunu, Dr. Jemima Nunu. It's her first time on Strong and Sassy, so I'm really excited. Hello, Doc. Good evening. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. Um, Abeko, do you want to fix that for me? Well there we go. Hello, Doc. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Hello. Hello, it's, good evening. Good evening. It's so nice to see you. You too. Let me wave and try and get in a better light. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Jemima Nuno is joining us um, on Zoom. We also have Stephanie Benson, um, the beautiful musician Stephanie. Um, she'll be joining us in a second. And of course, my partner in crime, um, Aram. Hi, Aram. Hi, anymore. You there right now, you're like a co-host. <laughs> I so, know, right? Um, tonight, I think we're doing this <laughs> together um, as we talk about chivalry. So this is how this topic came about, right? I was watching a movie, well, I don't want to give it away, but anyway, I was watching a movie about the medieval times, you know, and um, I noticed how the men behaved in those times, you know, very chivalrous, as we'll call it, you know, mm -hmm. opening doors and all of that. And actually, I saw it at the inauguration of Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When Vice President X, well, former Vi Vice President Pence came down down the stairs and walked around the car to open the door for his wife, and she sat down, you know, and then he shut the door and then he walked around. And I just looked at it and I was like, it's been such a long time since I've seen any um, Ghanaian man who's not a driver um, <laughs> opening the door, you know, for his wife or the lady that he's out with. So I got to thinking, is chivalry dead? You know, because you also hear so many stories of how um you know you go out with a guy and it's automatic you know it's like a split the bill thing you know it's like you can open your own door and then i got to thinking that you know we've over the years we fought for so many things we fought for the right to be educated we fought for um the right to health care we fought for the right to vote you know and even now we fight for equal pay we fight that if we work the same hours and do the same hour to the same kind of job as a man that we as women get the same amount of pay so we're fighting for a lot of equality and in that fight for equality are we losing um the romantic you know man as we 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 may have seen or as we may have known and um, so that's what this topic is about that's how it came about um and in researching i found that um there was a man called andreas capulanus who was a 12th century author and courtier, courtier and he wrote the 12 chief rules of chivalrous courtly love mm. so let me just tell you some of them um one of them is thou shall keep thyself chaste for the sake of her oh, whom yeah. thou lovest and um, thou shalt not knowingly strive to break up a correct love affair thou shalt not choose for thy love anyone whom an thou shalt not have many who know of thy love affair um, thou shalt speak no evil. Thou shalt in all things be polite and courteous. Mm -hmm. In practicing the solace of love, thou shalt not exceed the desires of thy lover. I mean, it's a lot, but really, um, I think it speaks to love, respect, and honor. So let's yeah. simplify it and say that in the fight for equality with men, have we lost that love, respect, and honor. Doc, let me come to you first. What are your initial thoughts on um, chivalry and equality? Um, I think it's good that you gave the historical context of um, chivalry um, because it's good that we know where it came from. Um, and you ended what the, on what the basic tenets of chivalry are. It's politeness, respect, being courteous. But, you know, for me, those are not qualities that you should only reserve for women or for men. Any decent human being should be um, displaying those anyway. Um, so for me, it's not a case of is chivalry dead. If a man was not polite 
or courteous or respectful towards me when I'm dating him, there is no way I'm going to go out with him again. But I would expect him to show those kind of traits to anybody who he comes into contact with. So it's not that I think he should reserve it for only those people who he wants to be romantically involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, in other words, be um, chivalrous to um, a woman that he is attracted to, but be downright awful to anybody else he comes along with. I, I don't agree with that at all. But the, so thing, the reason all- why we're putting in the context of a relationship is that, you know, a lot of times familiarity sets in. Mm. And so, <laughs> I like the way he said. Mm. <laughs> if you no, but if you allow it, if you allow it, then yeah. If you know, I mean, was it a couple of days ago? I I celebrated my eighth um, anniversary with um, since dating my husband. And um, to be honest with you, um, these things, yeah, you you work hard to maintain them. You maintain the respect, the politeness, the the loyalty in your relationship. Um, and if you think it's slacking a bit, which it can do a bit, then you put steps in to ensure that you buff it up a little. Yeah. It takes work, but we but both both parties in the relationship need to do that. Okay. So well, I- for me, it's it's not dead, but it's not something that I think only has to be reserved for a male and a female relationship. Okay, awesome. Um, Aram, what's about you? What do you think? Um, when I posted this topic, a lot of people had interesting comments. And then somebody said something which will put what we're trying to do in context. He said that if you want equality, then I don't have to be chivalrous towards you. <laughs> and that is so sad. First of all, I would like to say that instead of fighting for gender equality we should be thinking more of gender equity and i find it so surprising or sad when i feel like some guys get so upset when they hear about gender equality because somebody literally says to me that if i'm carrying your bag and if i'm opening doors for you (laughs) does that mean you also carry my bag and open doors for me if we're talking about (laughs) equality Equality, yeah that's the argument You know, but like Doc was saying, for me, it goes beyond the opening of doors. Those are just like acts, but loyalty, respect. And it shouldn't be just because we're dating, but we're going to keep it in that context. And so the fact that I want, I say um, maybe because we're doing the same job, we should be paid the same amount of money so you don't respect me or you don't treat me with like nicely or you don't think you should open doors for me just because I'm saying that we should be equal in saying things can i just put out there that i i don't know how you you guys feel about it doc Mm -hmm. and aaron but there's something so what's the word so nice Mm -hmm. about a man who comes out of the car and opens the door for you there's something so nice about a man who opens you know the door for you going into a restaurant or into a hotel you know and i I don't know if we've lost if we've lost that. I would say that I'll give I use myself. Doc is laughing. I don't know why she's I'll laughing. use myself an example. I think the issue is that for feminists, both the extreme depends on where you are on the spectrum. I personally had an issue or I found myself in a place where people were always doing things for you in exchange for something else. But if I can, and then so the some of the feminists on the extreme spectrum would say that I can open my own door, I can buy my own food, I can do this for myself, I can carry my own bag. I don't see why you're trying to do that for me. I had to come to a place of allowing people to do things for me because I don't I don't want to feel like oh because you did this for me you expect something in return. When I moved back into into Ghana when I was trying to settle back. I, I go out and the people, you know, I'm out with my girls and somebody sends the drinks over. And then for that reason, they think they should get your number. I don't know you. I may not like you as a person, but then people come with that sort of energy. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I didn't ask you to send the drink over. 
I can buy my own drinks. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can buy my own drinks, but that still doesn't I mean, mean that you can't. Like that like that. It's not decent. I mean, for, for me, it's about, you know, your common tenets as a human being. Mm -hmm. I am not one of those people who is about equity. Because I think what is the essence of equity? Why do you want things to be equitable? You want things to be equitable, equitable so that there is equality. So I'm not, personally, that's my end goal. Equality is my end goal. And I don't think by being polite or by being respectful or by being courteous, yeah, it, it you time. are damaging that in any way. Mm -hmm. I, when I go open a door, say if I open a door, I look behind and see if there's anybody behind me. And then you me. keep it open. Keep yeah. It open yeah. That is just, it's just civil. You know? For men. I so mean... If, some, if a, a person, a gentleman, um, opens the door, and lets me um, walk through. Um, if the, if he's opening the door and he lets me walk through, it's really no big deal because I would do. I I often do the same. So I yeah. think some of these things are not. How can I put it? They're not so much of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know it's it's we've we've lost something of our courtesy and politeness if we see these things as mm -hmm. oh if you want to be the same as me then i don't have to be yeah, polite to you since when, are you, me, then since when are you not polite to your equals yeah i mean that that's not I, in my I get book. i get what you mean um so stephanie has joined us hello stephanie hey hi how are you and your beautiful family and your children and your very handsome sons and and all of everyone they're all good, actually. They're, they're as much troublemakers as they have always been. <laughs> I wonder where they got that from. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, definitely you. Definitely. So definitely. But thank you for joining us. It's so great to have you. Um, so we were just talking about um, how we felt about whether chivalry um, was dead and what it means to us um, as, you know, modern day women. So what would be your initial take on, on that? <laughs> I, I think when I first came to Ghana it was the pretty much the very first time I was actually shocked about how inept a lot of them were. I mean, I uh, nobody actually pays attention to um, manners in general, um, and and I'm saying nobody. I'm, I'm that's really broad. Actually, it's probably not the right thing to say, but. Um, I dealt with a lot of um, men when I first came, obviously, because of music and something. Mm -hmm. But then, I want to say one is something, I'm not talking about sex, I'm just talking about, you know, a, a job and whatnot. So they're always sort of quite polite. But, um, but there were general things that I noticed that um, how they treated other women was, was pretty shocking to me, you know. I, and they didn't even think twice about it. It wasn't like, okay, oh, sorry, I just shut the door in your face. I didn't mean to. But it was it it looked like it was just pretty normal. So I, I mean I was I was in shock, and it took a while for me to try to get used to it. And the thing with me is I have a big mouth, so when I see certain things that I feel doesn't sit right with me, I would say it. I, I would pull you up on it, and and I'll, I'll call you out. And uh, and I find myself doing that a lot. And um, and so yeah, that's my take on it. In in the in Ghana, it's 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 terrible yes. really. so I, it's, it's interesting because with all three of you um aram doc and stephanie the issue of manners mm -hmm. has come up so we're not even talking now about the extra step that men would go to you know to make a woman feel special if you're taking out on a date we're talking about just basic yes. manners you see but then when it comes to things like that who do we blame do we blame the men or do we blame their mothers uh, I don't even know oh. where to begin from. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Doc said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said they say their mothers. Do they not have fathers? And well, their fathers too. Well, even if you blame their fathers, do their, their fathers' their mothers, mothers teach them? <laughs> no, I mean, it's a family setting. Mm. So, you know, I think that if we say we should blame their mothers, that's completely unfair. Okay. Because it takes people... I, I, would blame, I would blame the mothers, though. Because... And only in, 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 in most African society, and we're talking about African society, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, or we're talking generally. No, no, because African... African society, what we have is um, uh, generally 85%, and I may be exaggerating, but from what I've seen, and I've been to the villages and I've lived in Accra and pretty much a lot of 
um, you know, different places. I actually lived in the bush for six months before I actually came to Accra. And I noticed that, um, yes, you can say that the men can have some input, but generally in African um, societies, the women are the ones who bring up their children. The men just come in after work, they sit, they drink, and they go to bed. That's not really, uh, a, you know, like a coming together from the father's side, you know, sitting with the children and the, and the mother. Usually it's the, it's the mother who brings up the child. And I noticed that the women tend to allow the men to, you know, talk to them anyhow they want. I mean, and, and usually they make excuses for it. I see it even in educated families. Yep. Um, so in, in Ghana, okay, let me just be, be you know, clear on that. So I think that it's up to the woman to show that they will not put up with certain behaviors from their men, and then that will trickle down. It has a, you know, it has an, uh, you know, effect on the children when they see what is not acceptable and what's acceptable. Exactly. And men generally are not really that attuned to their children. I don't care how good a father you are. My husband is an amazing father, but the certain things that we are really attuned to when it comes to our children as women. So I feel like sometimes it's up to us to set the standard not by just talking to them about how they should be, it's by showing them how they should be. Exactly. And we don't do that um, in our families. I agree completely. Okay, Doc, what do you think? I think it's very interesting, even when men's failings, we still find a way of, you know, apportioning blame to women. I just find that intriguing. Mm, I guess see what you if, mean. Yeah. If, if there is that gap, then we should be holding men to an equally high standard as we are women. Um, if that's the reality. And I think sometimes when we shield men and not hold them accountable, mm -hmm. that's where there's a problem. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, in terms of households, especially ones that are headed by um, females, um, that, you know, sometimes there's still this mindset that, oh, he is a man, we can't treat him the same as a woman. But for how long are we going to almost um condone condone that you know i think we all need a mindset change we need to understand that you know manners are manners are manners yeah if i have manners um, if a man has manners, the same thing. so uh, for me i still hold the um the both the parents account for, for making sure yeah, that their sons turn out. If your child is badly mannered, mm -hmm. then it is equal. Okay, Stephanie, you were saying it. something. Eram, I'll come to you in a second. Stephanie, you were saying something. Oh, no, what I'm saying is, now, I'm, I'm, nobody's excusing the man. I'm not. I'm just saying that when it comes to bringing up um, uh, a family, usually, um, and we can never get away from that, it's usually women who... Um, bring up our children, even if they work, it's just the way it is, and the way it, it will always be. I'm not make, not any way, shape, for example. I have boys, and my boys are very, very sporty. My husband is not typically a sporty uh, man, but I am. So I do a lot of, um, you know, sports with them and and whatnot, and 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 I also have to give time to my children, uh, my girls. He talks to his girls, his his daughters a lot, but I, you know, we always have this mentality of the man to be playing with the the boys so much. So occasionally, I would say, listen, I can't do this. So can you? I know you don't like going to sports so much, but can you please do this? It's usually up to us. That's what I'm trying to say. That sometimes to to just give them that, like the you know the the, the nudge. The the, yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, so yeah, so I th that's what I'm trying to say. So it's up to us to set the standard. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm not I mean, I, I grew up in a household where my, my mom, who's celebrating her birthday today, happy birthday, mom, and raised us not according to our gender, but according to the hier hierarchy in which we were born. Okay. So she made sure that my brothers were responsible for the people below them. Okay. So my brothers can cook. They can bake. They are... Real gentleman. I mean, I would want to marry someone like one of my brothers because they cook and they clean and they're really like responsible people. So I find it very weird when somebody is being rude or dismissive of women because I don't come from that kind of household. So it's very so I wouldn't find myself in a situation in like a verbally abusive or physically abusive because it, it wouldn't make sense to me that that is love. Yeah. 
You yeah. understand? Mm. Based on where I'm coming from. So the whole chivalry, th- I don't, I, f- I feel like men should stop equating it with the fact that, oh, if we're getting paid, we're doing the same thing, then why should I go the extra mile for you? Yeah, I see what you mean. That shouldn't be it. I feel like whether we like it or not, I don't know who set gender rules, but they were said before you and I came. And they're saying things that are the way they are, even though we're trying to unlearn and move forward. But it, even in situations where the woman is the one that's earning, the dynamics are always same. Because you can't say, I should be making the money. Then I will come home, cook, clean, and then you just sit down and put your leg on the table and be watching TV. That yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, I get what you mean. So, but but that's gender roles. So, which is kind <clears throat> of uh, a different. Because, but I'm just yeah. saying, if you are saying that, I don't think that we should men should lose chivalry because we're vying for equality. It's right. as simple as that. Okay, I you see. You should what be you mean. nice, res- respectful, lawyer, irrespective of the fact that we earn the same pay or not. Okay, so um, Doc, let me come to you because I think as the more we talk about chivalry, the more I feel like you know chivalry is kind of linked to romance on a, on a certain, um, perhaps you know, and we we will call it you know being romantic and stuff. Is it important you know to the the modern day woman to have a man who you know goes that extra you know mile to make her feel special, open the doors or pay for dinner, you know, open the car door or um you know um strap her shoes for her, you know, are, are those things are, are they still important to to us modern day women and if they are should they be or should we just forget about, you know, all those fuzzy feelings that some of us get when you have you know, this big strapping man, you know, tie your shoelaces or, or strap your heels or, or, or something. Well, I wanted to tie my shoelaces. I wanted to lick my feet. I wanted to <laughs> oh, my God, Stephanie. <laughs> I wanted to comb my hair before I go to bed. <laughs> and I'm no shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I'm with you on that. <laughs> that he irons my shirts for me i mean when i'm going to bed he pulls he pumps my pillow for me you know it's like general things i mean occasionally when he's massaging my feet i say listen i feel like you're licking my toes right now as much feet possible but he does and he'll lick it and i'll, I'll be happy and then you know it's like that's the way it should be heaven i mean i know but i'm upset about feminism and i know you weren't asking me the question let me tell you <laughs> No, but I think people. Uh, I'm sorry, but I think the um, the views maybe people have about. I'm 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 a very self proud, self professed feminist, and there's nowhere where in in feminism there's nowhere where it says you cannot enjoy romance. I mean, people have different love languages. If your love language is presents and gifts and all that, woman, why not? There is absolutely nothing wrong with it if your love language is um a man spending time with you listening to you intensely massaging you rubbing your shoulders why ever not um i think that all of these they, uh, to answer your question definitely romance is an essential part of any relationship and i don't you know i don't see that as being anything wrong or negative but what i think is important is that the person who you are with on this wants to know your love language mm. so if they are into you and they know you and they love you um they should want to express that in a way that communicates best to you yeah so if it is through um brushing your hair at night or puffing up your pillows great go for it there's absolutely nothing wrong with that in fact it shows that he is a human being worthy of your love yeah. because he is ready to reciprocate whatever you give him yeah so yeah. I, I mean he's so bloody lucky <laughs> I think that there's no I just I'm no joking. I'm yeah, no no problem at all. But I, I also think that, you know, sometimes, you know, and I I don't blame men sometimes. It it can be confusing. They've got this preconceived idea of how as a woman, you know, they should treat us. So a man may come uh, with a bouquet of flowers for somebody like me. 
-hmm. who I don't even know how to tend to flowers. They will wilt and die probably within a day. Mm -hmm. But because that's what he thinks yeah. that, you know, would show that he's romantic and all. Um, and sometimes I think the signals are maybe sometimes hard to read. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with romance. And In I also fact, think that the men should tailor the chivalry towards the kind of woman that they have. Like Doc is yeah. saying, so you can't just be buying me flowers when I would rather take mobile money as my love language. <laughs> I mean, as I'm saying. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. <laughs> so you need to tailor the chivalry okay. to the kind of woman that you want. But I mean, I think occasionally men should step up their games. But how long can you keep opening doors? I mean, I sometimes I'll get exasperated. Like we finish eating and I want to get in the car. It's not that you walk around, come and open the door, go back to the other side. <laughs> no, you see, that's where you go. You see? This is the kind of mixed signals. You can't no, be based on that. You see, because I wait, I wanna finish. I also don't want it to be like I have these expectations of you. So if you don't do it, it's a problem. I love I mean I went on a day recently. We have to have expectations of each other. I think it's but really important. Always open the door. That it's always open the door for me. That's the way it goes. You see, but that's <laughs> you. Always open. Always open the darn you door. Want uh, always open. <laughs> you want that. So it's now fine. it's in the rain, and then we, we go out, and then I'm standing there saying, "Come and open the door for me before yeah. I sit down." But of course, you have to walk around with the umbrella. <laughs> but it has to be heated. It has to be part of you as you grow up. It has to be something you do naturally. So I don't think about it. I'm just thinking before I get in the car, my husband for 31 years will open the door before he sits on his side. He doesn't think about it. I don't think about exactly. it because it's a part of me. Now, it's not really just about um, romance. I think we're, we're, we're sort of putting the two together. But chivalry we really should come with anybody who is not in a romantic setting? True. I think, you know, if I'm walking um, in, um, you know, somewhere and somebody um, sees me get out of the car and choose to help me out of the car, that's beautiful. I may not know them. They can just... And, uh, and, you know, and sorry, my sister's calling. Can you believe it? No. Oh, why, why is your sister calling? Because like... <laughs> <laughs> she can see her. <laughs> she had you on the radio and decided to call you whilst you're on the radio. Wow. <laughs> I, think, I think it's important that somebody opens the door for you. Those things, I think it's just nice to do. I, I like it. I expect it. But, um, you but know, I'm, I'm also... I, expect equal pay and all that things that come with being a feminist but i still want somebody to treat me like a lady and i'll do the same if you know so i see somebody coming out of a car and they're struggling to get out or maybe they're wearing high heels i would usually just go i don't care whether it's a man or a woman i'll go mm -hmm. and hold their hand and how i'll say do you want some help if i see somebody walking down the street with too many bags and and they need help i'll go over and say listen i'm walking this way do you want me to help you mm. i've been at the, at the airport sometimes and i've seen people um, and a mother with a baby and struggling with a suitcase and i see men walk past them walk past you know especially african men they just walk they don't even look and then i'll go and say listen hey i could hold the baby hold your bag which do you want and then i'll take something that's just nice yeah it yeah. is you know? Yeah, it is. And you remind me of um, when I, I was coming back to Ghana with my newborn son um, and holding my hand luggage and a new baby and a little um, diaper bag. And I was coming down these airplane, airplane stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs, there are about six tall, strong Ghanaian men who just looked at me, yep. hold the baby, the yep. luggage, yep. the um, and, you know, and they just didn't they even do anything. Didn't say, they didn't say anything. And I got to them and I actually said, hello, you guys that's really not cool like for you to be standing here and see me struggling coming down the stairs and not help this could be your wife your mother your sister i mean come on you know it's it's so so it's i get i get you know what i was saying that you know chivalry it's, it's a thin line between chivalry and just madness you yes. know just being just being the number of times i've walked behind guys who just bang the door in my face yeah. like i'm they're, they're ahead of you and then they just bang the door and you're like oh wow you they're know just, like the, the average Ghanaian guy is some of them are just rude like people meet you and they feel that they want to talk to you so you should stand and talk to them excuse you i don't even know you you come they come into a room you are there and they expect that you greet them certain basic things i feel some people may 
miss the whole book in SS on courtesy for boys and girls. Like they just miss that whole part of high school. Cause you are just rude for no apparent reason. Just because you some of them feel like they are men or something. It's ridiculous. Okay, so so Doc, let, let's let's talk about the power dynamic in um in the relationship. And I think that we can honestly say that in every relationship there is some sort of power dynamic well in most relationships apart yeah. from the really enlightened self-aware you know high Indeed. yeah i mean so yeah like the normal Indeed. ones you know yeah um do you do you feel like when when men are being like super nice or, or just being nice or just being the reasonable service as some of us would say but maybe let's call it super nice for the sake of this conversation <laughs> um you know when they're being super nice like that do, do, do they feel, do you think they feel like they're giving away their power you know by mm -hmm. by 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 serving you know because the african man mm -hmm. is not really taught to serve um, yeah. his woman you know so maybe yeah. bring her food you know bring her water to wash her hands or like stephanie said you know rub her feet or wear her shoes i love it when like my i'm with somebody who like straps my shoes for me and massage like, my feet after like a long day so, my heels it's so sexy like you you get a hall pass for like a year like oh. i mean anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> what did you say what did you say stephanie no, no, no! Tell us what you said. <laughs> I said I'll tell them every day. I'm oh sorry. God! Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we didn't hear that. Okay. <laughs> I was talking to you, Peter. I didn't. I wasn't going to say it. It's my fault. I know. I know. So let me go I back to Doc question. with the question. Yes. What's the question, please? So the question is: Do you, you feel? <laughs> Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Doc, Stephanie said you forgot in the question. <laughs> so let that ask again. What was the question? The, so the question was. <laughs> wow. The question was, do you feel like it has become like a power play when men feel like they're giving up their power when they're nice, you know, or or loving, or gentle, or soft? towards um women thinking uh let me get my voice back <clears throat> i think in our context yeah because as you rightly said unfortunately men our men are not um socialized in that way mm. and it's seen as a weakness yeah um, amongst men um <clears throat> just even the most basic because a lot of what we're saying is basic yeah mm -hmm. You know, it's to um, meet your partner's needs, to serve them, to be of service to them. It's basic. You know, when you love somebody, isn't that what you do or should be doing anyway? Yeah. So I think, yeah, in our context, it is. Because naturally, when I love somebody, it's not like you have to tell me, oh, you know, do this for them or do that for them. Naturally, I want to do it. Yeah. So if you love me and you know I like things a particular way or doing things a particular way in stephanie's case she's got very many specifications on what you like right then why wouldn't you do it if you love them but we also as well i think as women we also we, we settle for the basics as well yeah mm. it's like okay he's got a pulse We'll just manage him like that. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh, hell no. Wow. Shade. <laughs> Shade. When many of us will say he has a pulse and another thing, and then that's it. <laughs> we'll be like, okay, we'll just manage it like that. No. Even if he behaves in a certain way. And mm -hmm. we don't even give them basic standards. We're like, True. oh, even if it's a bit horrible to me, no. at least, mm -mm. you know. Me, I always call called... people out. Like, I always call you out. If you're out of line, I am calling you out. Because, like I said, I come from a place where things are done in a certain way. So, there's there are standards. Somebody told me that me, I mean, I have my standards in a certain way and it's very hard. Like, if, go hard or go home period yeah. you can't be disrespectful towards me there's a certain way that i like to be treated because i will also treat you with that same level of respect 
So yeah. you need to treat me with the same level of respect. I will not settle for less. It's not an option. So if you can't do it, the door is wide open. Exit I, I, I must left. say that I admire your strength, um, which is, is amazing. You know, when women can can have that standard and say, you know, I'd rather lose somebody that I love than lose, you know, pieces of myself or my self-respect yeah. or, you know, it's, mm. it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. But, um, Stephanie, let me ask you this question. So a lot of Ghanaian men will say about a lot of Ghanaian women that Ghanaian women, if you are nice to them, small, no, then they don't respect. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I've had, no, I've had that. I've, I've had that from, Quite a number of men, you know, say, as, for Ghana, as soon as you give them, you know, you give them small space, no, you know, they are trying to be bossy and tell you what to do and all of that. And you see, the thing is, if, if, if we're going to, to be real, you know, a man has his ego um, and there's a way that a woman manages in, in a relationship, manages, you know, not massages, manages the ego. <laughs> Um, for example, if we go to the Bible, it says that a wise woman um, builds her home mm. and a foolish woman breaks it down or, or tears it down with her own hands. Mm. And so we know that there, there are things that we do. There's a way that we might talk. There's tones. There's ways that we provoke the men in our lives, you know, and all of that. Do we also in this, you know, this, 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 this quest for, for this love, respect and honor, do we also need to teach our daughters mm -hmm. the essence of, of being a lady or the essence of, of, of seasoning your words with salt or learning how to be gracious, you know, and so, so that we're able to get the best out of the people that we love. Yeah. Because the truth is, I mean, I think whether it's <clears throat> male, female, man or woman, you can always get the best out of anybody based on how you present certain things or how you speak to them or how you treat them True. you know so do you think that there's an uh, my questions are so long-winded this evening like yeah. by the time i get to the middle i can't remember <laughs> where the beginning of the question <laughs> <laughs> but um stephanie i'm sure you you get what i'm saying well, I get what you say, Dora. Okay. Um, and yeah. yeah, we do have to sort of um, bring out uh, and bring up our children to be um, to be strong and have the ability to communicate what they want or um, all their thoughts or, you know, their values across without being um, rude or, I don't know, insulting or diminishing the man's mm -hmm. uh, and ego. But it all depends on, on the kind of person that you're also dating. I mean, African men, unfortunately, I don't know whether it's due to the um, upbringing and also, you know, the I find that when you bring up, when they're bringing up their children, they, they teach them to be very subservient right in the beginning, you know, so it's like, don't talk to me, you know, people are here, Go ahead, you know, like, so, I mean, there's just so many restrictions, you know, and, and also the threat of being beaten, that when they grow up as men, they tend to pass that on without realizing they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, with, with my um, husband, for instance, if he's um, saying something I don't really want to hear, I just say, hey, whoa, you know, all right. I get what you're saying, but listen to this. You know, there's always a way I say it. I have my own way of communicating things. Um, and f unfortunately for me, my children, my girls have got the same mannerism. And it works for one, it doesn't work for the other in her relationship. So you have to be very careful managing, because I'm very straightforward. If John says something I don't really accept, and I know I'm getting irritated, I, I make a joke and I say, okay, now you're going to listen to me and in a funny way. And then I'll still make him feel good. My number two is very much like me. She would like say it, but she's with a guy who can't take it. Whereas number one is able to say it. And the guy is able to deal with it. So I think they have to, you know, figure it out themselves when they're in the relationship, mm -hmm. but predominantly they do have to be able to say right from the beginning how they feel and how things are going to go women are very good at lying to themselves in the beginning when they find a man mm -hmm. and go oh no it's okay it's okay and then they get married and everything mm -hmm. they said was okay it's not okay mm -hmm. you know in in the marriage so then they're always like they're, they're unhappy and they're sad and they don't know how to say it because if they now say it the guy is saying oh you're why you've changed blah 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 you know it happens so you need to lay it all out i feel yes. before you get married you have to go counsel. You have to go for counseling. Every 
couple has to go for some kind of counseling before they get married. It's vital because there's so many miscommunications when they grow up. They brought up differently. It's just ridiculous. So that's what I say. If I had, if it was a president, if I was the president, I would make that ruling. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, <laughs> the ruling has been made. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I need to go for a quick message from our friends. But Strong and Sassy is brought to you by Roberts and Sons Optical Services. Roberts and Sons Seeing is Believing. This is still Strong and Sassy. And um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. The conversation continues. Our 130-year journey at Allianz has seen our operations growing to cover over 92 million Allianz customers in over 70 countries worldwide. Allianz Life Insurance Ghana, a subsidiary of Allianz Group, has put together a wide range of insurance packages to suit the pockets of every Ghanaian individual, family, group, corporate body, as well as their employees. Kindly call us on 030-2267-892 or 059-144-9686 or visit our website www.alliance-gh.com for more inquiries. Alliance Life, we secure your future. Oh, Charlie, close the window small. Ah, your room be too bright, oh. Why, you be vampire where you know they like sunlight. Oh, my guy, my eyes, oh, my eyes. Behind the PC problem. Oh. In the sun problem. Come on, light bulb, sir. This no matter. Eh? I beg, go Robert and Sons. Mm. Oh, yeah. The magic to him, I know correct. Cra. Where Robert and Sons sort them out sharp. Now, so, so stylish frames in the wrong. <laughs> we go, go Robert <laughs> and Sons, right? Did you know I was sitting inside proper? For over 25 years, Robert & Sons continues to provide specialist eye care for both adults and children. Locate us at Adabaka, Adenta, Kumasi, Usudangwa, Tema, Weja, and East Legon. Call 050-151-9111. Robert & Sons, seeing is believing. <laughs> So give your eyes the best attention and care it deserves this year because the eye is our most important sense organ accounting for about 80% of our awareness of our environment. With 30 plus years of experience, Roberts & Sons Limited Optical Services continues to offer you a comprehensive eye care service which includes all day comprehensive eye testing, eye specialist services, pediatric eye care services, visual field testing, optical coherence, tomography scan, 100% original and unbeatable frames and optical products including contact lenses and solutions, corporate eye care services and much more. Visit Roberts & Sons Optical in Adabraka, Osudankwa Circle, Tema Community 6, Weja, Istegon, Adenta and Kumase. For more information, please call 030-222-2601. Or zero five zero one five one nine one one one, or you can visit us on www.robertsandsonsoptical.com, and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Robert N Sons Limited. Roberts and Sons Optical Services seeing is believing. And thank you so much to Roberts and Sons for coming on board with Strong and Sassy. We love you. We appreciate you for the support. And if you're just tuning in, I mean, to be honest, you've missed pretty much the whole show. So, well, you have to go on Facebook and start from the beginning. Um, but our phone lights are open 0302216541, 0302216541. And um, whilst we're waiting for you guys to join the conversation, let me put the question that I put to Stephanie, which I can't remember, to, um, to Doc, who hopefully remembers. And maybe Stephanie can help out with the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I unmuted you. What did you say? I asked Doc I, to answer the question that I asked you, except I couldn't remember the question. Well, she can't remember the question either. Bringing up our children to understand what they want and whether they can pass it on, how they say it to men and their partners, something like that. Yeah, something like to that. Manage the man's ego. <laughs> yes, yes, managing an ego. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think Stephanie said most. I think, you know, you do have to. But I think the key thing that we all agree with here is that we have to raise our kids to actually, um, 
speak speak your mind but season it with 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 respect wisdom um you can tell somebody something that is quite difficult to take you can tell it you you should actually but it doesn't have to be so scathing and and nasty and biting you know i can be i mean probably my husband is the best person to ask about this i can be quite a plain person if i don't like something you will know about it but i i I mean i'd like to think that i do it with respect Mm -hmm. because i respect him so even if i have something quite unpalatable to say yeah i'll i'll say it but i'll do so in a respectful manner maybe you know sometimes not always when you're a bit angry but the majority of the time that's what you do and um especially when we're bringing up girls we shouldn't you know a lot of the time we bring up our women to stomach so much hey, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter even if it's hurt, hurting you emotionally we're just told to just mm. suck it up and weather it if it's that's how all men are you know it rains mm. everywhere mm. you know and i think kinds of these kinds of things we should teach them how to manage Teach them how to say it's okay for you to put an end to this. It's okay for you to have your boundaries and to say, you know what, I'm not too happy about this. I think. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Doctor, do you ever do you ever initiate sex? Um, when I want it. Yeah. Also, you can. You're okay with doing that. Why? What's wrong with a woman initiating? Right. I, I was just curious. And so it's something that you'll pass on to your your children too, right? I mean, to be able to do that. If you want, yeah. if if you want sex, then you're with a partner. What? You, get it? Do you know? I don't. Maybe because I was brought up in England, these things, it's no I big deal. Yeah, it's really not a big deal. I know in Ghana, it's not seen to be ladylike, or it seems it seemed to be somewhat. Um, always the man has to do this, but hell no. I mean, if, if you want it. Can I say something? Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm still trying to understand where that question came from. And, <laughs> <You> <laughs> but um, I have a caller <laughs> on the line. So I, I, I asked because she's very plain, plain. So I was just curious, only because sometimes, <laughs> you know, um, when somebody claims to be a feminist, they, they, you know, they are able to be that forward, but not everybody is that way. And I was just curious. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, a um, women Doc is on the beat. Way. Wait, wait, just let me tell you something. A lot of women are not that way to their husbands, but we, when you go into these women's groups and then you see how much pent up and repressed sexual frustration there is yeah. in this country, it is all pent up. We because need to have they, a show on pent up sexual yeah, frustrations, yeah, I yeah, think. We um, do. Many <laughs> women a bunch of have, people. <laughs> it's, it's bottled and it's about to explode. Yep. Wow. Okay. So I have my first call on the line. Hello. Good evening. I'm so sorry for making you wait. In my own credit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, I'm Nana. I'm calling from Adenta. Okay, Nana. What's on your mind? Okay. So uh, then if. if I'm I'm all for this whole gender equality thing because I believe we all deserve equality and treated fairly. So if this is what we believe in, then I believe that women should be comfortable to do the same thing they expect a man to do for them. Because if that's not the case, then it goes back to no matter how equality we think we are fighting for we have a responsibility one way or the other no matter what but here's the case that we are here saying this and that and about equality and we should be treated fairly but when it comes to the woman doing the same thing that a man has to do a man will do for him then it becomes mm. so what are we really discussing yes we we, we are talking about money money and money is there but all i heard was a man has to a man has to. Is it okay for a woman to also equally do this? Had, all you had where was a man has to and a yes, man has to. Yes, because this opening of each thing was based on, on, on mostly the men. I, 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 I think once in a while head, when the man is thinking, then it was like a general thing. But it was mostly based on a man thing. Like It's like a man thing. Is supposed mm-hmm. to be. Can yes. a woman equally do the same thing for the man? You want us to open doors. We'll open doors for you, okay, Nana. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's what you want. Um, 
my next caller. Hello, good evening. What's your name? Good evening, you Madam Aniwa. Hi. Hi. I hope you're doing well. Yes. Yes, I am. Too. Yeah, this is a very important topic that you are discussing. Thank you. Yes, okay. So what's yeah. on your mind? You know, this is Hajiman Joseph from tonight. Um. Hello, Joe. I mean, I was still fighting with you from last week. Oh. Yeah, you know, the shriveling thing that you are talking about, it's a process. It's every man's duty. When you start with holding of bags, opening of gates, that is the basic. When you, when you move to, let me carry it for you. It is too heavy for you. This one, you shouldn't carry. I'm the man who has enough strength. I should carry. Then it becomes politeness. Anyway, I have been asking, when will I be fighting or when will they be confusing? Then if there's a confusion, then I'll look into the eyes of my partner and tell her, hey, that's what has what happened. I still love you. So... It should be romantic from beginning. It should be your duty. And also, I mean, it should be grown into manners. I, wa- I was once moving somewhere, and I met a lady who was, I mean, carrying this metal to mount the canopy. She asked me to help her to hold it. I put everything on my shoulder, though it was heavy. I didn't know her anywhere, and I sent it across the road for her. She was very pleased. Mm. So if you want your marriage to grow... Let the woman look very important. Okay. Thank you for such a pointed topic. Thank you very Aww. much, um, Joseph, um, for that. You are redeeming <coughs> yourself small, small. Um, <laughs> so I have Lloyd. Lloyd is my last caller, and then I'll come back to Stephanie, Jemima, and Aram for um, your closing comments. Lloyd, hi. Good evening. What's on your mind? Hello. Good evening. Hi. Any more? Yeah. Yes, I, I have a lot to say, but I'll try and make it short. Okay. First, I'm not I am actually pay, um, narrowing down on anything that anybody said. But for instance, your example, you were coming down from the airplane. For me, what I've been told as a security measure, at the airport, you don't assist anybody because of incidences of people um, handing over their luggage that has so turned collect, out to... So um, collect the baby then? Yeah, I understand. But this, all this, um, they, they could be social engineering, you know, so oh. it could be that these things, um, some so people would just do to so appeal to say party, or appeal to PT, then you so say, the okay, this woman is actually in need of help. You only <laughs> tend to assist. But don't, don't take it personal. It's not like I, I'm attacking you or something. I'm just citing the security aspect of the airport area. Now, let's, when it comes to helping a female, being catchers and all that, Anymore, if I tell you my experience, I happened to work with my subordinate. We traveled somewhere. I, I decided I'll be a very nice gentleman to this lady. One, I'm older than her. Two, she's my subordinate. Three, I'm married. I decided to open doors for this lady, the car door, the restaurant door, and a common thank you for a whole week. I did this. Not even a single thing. But I have a I question receive. for you, Lloyd. Have you been opening the car door and the restaurant door for your wife? Of course, that's something that I do. Okay, it's then don't then don't stop doing that. You let's forget about this subordinate woman who didn't appreciate that. Thank you for that. But the most important person in your life, once you are doing it for her, we are happy. That was Lloyd. Um, so let me, okay, gosh, we have an um, one minute, 30 seconds. So maybe 30 seconds each. So, um, Doc, do you want to go first just with your closing comments? Say is that, please, we shouldn't see these things as a big deal. It should be part and parcel of the way we interact with people. So the gentleman that just um, 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 spoke and said he did all these things for his subordinate and she didn't say thank you. Well, she should have because that wasn't good on her part. But mm. also it shows that it's not part and parcel of you. Because when I open a door for somebody and they go through and they don't say thank you, which most of the time they don't, it doesn't bother me. I still do it because... That's that's how I am. When I offer somebody my seat and they don't say thank you, it's fine because you know I I will keep on doing it because that's what civil civil people do. That's what's polite and respectful. Okay. So I think I, yeah. That, let me leave it like that. Okay. Um, Stephanie, your your final comments. Gosh, we have like thirty seconds. Okay, quick. I'll be quick. I know you intentionally said that because you know I talk too much. <laughs> let me just. <laughs> You know, um, what I want to say is chivalry is not just restricted to um, to men. I think women can also be chivalrous. I mean, um, nowadays we have same sex and relationships and whatnot. And I think it, it, it has to work every other way possible. So let's just be nice to each other. Okay. When we see something we feel that we can do, it's just do it. Okay. Chivalry has nothing to do. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Aram, 10 Don't seconds. Don't put... 
chivalry on the same spectrum as equality. Just be nice, be respectful, be loyal. That's it. Okay, and I'll be nice, respectful, and loyal and say a good evening to all my friends who were texting me about talking that we should have a show on initiation of lovemaking because you Ghanaian women are not initiating um, lovemaking enough for your husband. So we'll definitely have a show on that. Yeah, good we evening should. to everybody who texted. Thank you so much for choosing Strong Thank and Sassy. You. My name is Enimo Enimo. We'll do this again next week if God gives us life. Don't go anywhere. And Esmenu brings us the 8 o'clock news.